Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us once again this week. We're continuing with our study of God being the God of increase. God always increases. He always builds. He always lifts up. He always encourages, praise the Lord. And as his children, he is especially interested in us increasing and increasing, growing and growing. Basically, God has plans for us, and His plans for our future are always good. Amen? All right, well, let's get into the Word of God. I want to talk just a few minutes about our project that we've been talking about, SpeakFaith.tv. Wow, exciting things are happening on that front. Uh, one thing about SpeakFaith.tv, and I, I don't know, I'm sure you don't know the mechanics of this, but let me just give you a quick explanation. And that is this, that if we get a new speaker for SpeakFaith.tv, a new minister, and we need to add them in, we, we can add them in technologically speaking, but then Roku, the, the company that we are hosting the SpeakFaith.tv uh, channel on, they have to approve our code changes. Okay, so when we make a change, they have to approve our code changes. And so that can delay the process a bit, okay? But we did get permission just this week for Dr. Larry Hutton to be on SpeakFaith.tv. So I'm excited about that. We've already got him in the beta channel, <laughs> but we don't have him in the full-blown uh, SpeakFaith.tv regular channel that's in the Roku channel store. Now the difference between that is the beta channel is our development channel, okay? If you have a Roku, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you this so that you can go ahead and start watching uh, Dr. Larry Hutton's messages, uh, the beta channel is at SFTV Beta. I'm going to put that up here on the screen. If you go to your Roku account, you click in that you want to add a private channel, and you put SFTV Beta, you can add it in immediately, and you'll have the latest, greatest code release, if you will, of our SpeakFaith.tv channel. Now, the regular channel that's in the channel store will be updated when Roku approves that code change. And we just don't know when that's going to be, but when it is, Dr. Larry Hutton's messages will be available there as well. All right? Praise the Lord. Now, let me encourage you. You need to watch Brother Larry's uh, TV show called The Force of Faith. I heard Dr. Hutton speak at our church, oh, it's been several years ago now, and he taught on tithing. And I'm telling you, it's the best teaching I have heard on tithing. And I've heard some great teaching on tithing. But I kid you not, it is the best teaching on tithing that I've ever heard. And right now, he is teaching a series, a fairly long series, and we've got all the episodes of that series on SpeakFaith.tv. Uh, again, when it comes available in the regular channel, or if you want to go ahead and sign up for the beta channel, you can have both of them at the same time. So that's not a problem, uh, but you'll have to, you know, kind of keep up with which one's which. <laughs> but that's okay. That will give you the code as it comes out, and we've got other folks coming soon. So that was the thing that I really wanted to tell you last time and couldn't because I didn't have Larry Hutton Ministries permission officially yet, but we got that this past week, and I'm really excited about it. Praise the Lord. So let's get into the Word. Hallelujah. You can find more about SpeakFaith.tv by going to www.speakfaith.tv dot tv and i'll put that up on the screen right here so that you can see that for yourself now the last time we left off in psalm 44 and i want to go back there and read verse 3 once again for they talking about the children of israel they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them i love the way this is worded because it's it, it's 
it's reinforcing the fact that it wasn't their efforts by themselves. Okay, there's a distinction there that I want to make when we come right back to this, but let me keep reading. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand, talking about God, thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. Now here's the, here's the subtle difference here that I want you to see. There are a lot of Christians today that are saying, I don't have to do anything to receive the blessings of the Lord. That is not correct, okay? Jesus said we are to obey his commandments. We found out in previous studies that his commandments are not grievous. They're not hard to do. They're not obtrusive, okay? God will help us do what he's called us to do. So it's not that it's hard, but there are those that are teaching in this, what I call the greasy grace movement, there are those that are teaching that you don't have to do anything. You just sit back and you're just going to have it all handed to you on a silver platter. That's incorrect. But at the same time, it is also incorrect to say, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to do it by myself. It's by the power of my hand and the, the strength in my arm. In other words, the idea that I'm a self-made man. I, everything that I have, I got by the sweat of my brow, and it's all due to my efforts. That's not right either. See, there's two extremes. <laughs> you can go too far to the one side, or you can go too far to the other side. And as I've seen many, many times before with a lot of things, it's best to keep right down the middle of the road. Keep doing just exactly what you're supposed to do. No more, no less, and that's when you'll be blessed, all right? So God is the one who does the miracle. See, you can't do the miracle part anyway. Let's, let's face it. You can't perform a miracle. You can't make people well supernaturally. You can't have supernatural uh, uh, financial blessing come to you through your own abilities. That has to come from God. He is the source of the supernatural. Do you see that? You say, well, yeah, Dr. Bill, that's fairly, that's common sense. Yeah, but there's a whole lot of folks that don't seem to have common sense. They don't seem, to, they don't seem, you know, as the old saying goes, common sense isn't so common. You need to realize, God's the one that does the supernatural part, but I do have a part. My part is to do what the Word of God says to do. Do the Word. If I'll do the Word, then I'll receive the blessing. Do you see that? If I do the Word, then I'll receive the blessing. We are to be doers of the Word of God. Now, let's go, as a matter of fact, to, uh, I love my tablet computer here because it makes it very easy to go to particular scriptures, and particularly if I hadn't planned on it, <laughs> and it's, it's kind of in, in, in my mind, but I, I'm not exactly sure what it is that I want to look at. Well, this gives me the ability to go and, and find it. Uh, let's look at, let's see. Oh, there's so many good places to start. I think we'll start in, um, wow, I keep backing up further and further here. Um, let's start in verse 4 of James chapter 1. Let patience have her perfect work, that ye, or you, may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. God is your source, okay? Remember, that's what we're talking about. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, or does not find fault, and it, the wisdom, shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now let me ask you this. If it was all up to the ability and power of God alone, 
and your faith and your actions and your operation of faith had nothing to do with it, which is what the Greasy Graves folks are trying to say, then why would he say, Ask in faith nothing, nothing wavering. He that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven by the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now wait a minute. I thought we always received everything from the Lord. It didn't matter what we did. Didn't matter where we ask in faith. Didn't matter what we were believing. I don't have to confess the word of God. I don't have to do anything anymore. I'm under grace. That's what they're teaching, but that's incorrect. It is not accurate. It says here, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Okay? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And I'll tell you something about this Greasy Grace teaching. Folks that are into that teaching, they're unstable. They may not even know they're unstable, but they are because they're not biblically accurate. Accuracy in the Word of God is a key. All right. A uh, double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice that he is exalted, but the rich that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass shall pass away, for the sun is no longer risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways, doing only his ways. See, I'm a self-made man. I'm going to do what I want to do because I've got it all myself. No, he will fade away that way. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, testing trial. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. We still got Christians trying to do that. Said, oh, God's the one's doing all this to me. No. Let no man say, well, you know what? <laughs> That tells me flat out, I ain't going to say it. <laughs> That's not good English, but you understand what I'm saying. I'm not going to say something the Bible told me not to say. The Bible says, don't say I'm tempted of the Lord, then I ain't going to say I'm tempted of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? But, well, let me keep reading here. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with either, neither tempteth he any man. That's pretty straight, okay? But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You can be drawn away by your own inordinate desires. That's what lust is. A lot of people think of lust as only in a sexual sense. But it's really just, the word lust is really just inordinate desire. A desire that is not allowed according to the scripture. It is obviously not allowed for me to desire a woman other than my wife. You see what I'm saying? That's the way most people think of it, is in a sexual sense, a lust sense in that regard. But it's also not allowed, it's not scriptural, for me to desire my brother's motorcycle. <laughs> and I've got a friend of mine at work that has a motorcycle that I really like the looks of. <laughs> it's an awesome motorcycle. And I took pictures of it with my camera because it was so pretty. <laughs> Amen. And I'm a motorcycle guy, you know, and I looked at it, it's the prettiest blue. Oh my goodness. Whoo, it looks good. Amen. <laughs> Matter of fact, just for fun, I'm going to put a picture of it right here so you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I might look at that and think, oh, I want that motorcycle. Man, I want that motorcycle. You know what? That's an inordinate desire. That's not my motorcycle. And I'm telling you, he has no desire, no fault of giving me that motorcycle. And if I started playing games, now see, this is what a lot of Christians do. You know, brother, if the Lord ever speaks to you, for you to give me your motorcycle, well, I just, I just know that'd be such a blessing. See, now you're playing games. Now you're doing what, what I have heard called, and I agree with this terminology, you're using Bible witchcraft. You're trying to change someone's mind based on trying to play on their emotions. You know, if I went up to this guy and said, now, brother, that sure is a nice looking motorcycle and I know the Lord would bless you with a thousand fold return in motorcycles if you'd give me that one. 
<laughs> no. That's not scriptural, and that just ain't going to work. You know what's at the root of all that? Being drawn away by your own inordinate desires and enticed. Now, if I ever get a motorcycle like it, I'm going to get it the right way, okay? I'm not going to go play on his emotions. I'm not going to try to draw him off into something to give me a motorcycle. And you need to watch that, and you need to make sure you don't do anything like that at your church and among your Christian friends. It may just be a, a something small, some little device. Maybe it's a, a radio or a cassette player. I don't know. They don't have cassette players anymore, but an MP3 player. Those kinds of things. I've seen people do this kind of stuff. You know, and the next thing you know, that, that brother is coming up to you and says, you know, brother, the Lord just spoke to me and said to give you that, that thing, whatever it was. No, it wasn't the Lord. It was their guilty conscience that they had it and you didn't and you want it. And that is Bible witchcraft. You are drawn away of your own inordinate desire and enticed. But when lust or inordinate desire has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Do not err. Now, the word err in the King James means don't make a mistake. Err is mistake. E-R-R. Do not make a mistake, my, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. God is the God of increase. If it's a good gift and it's a perfect gift, it comes from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In other words, God doesn't change. He doesn't change his mind. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. That's Hebrews 13, 8. And you need to commit that one to memory. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And if anybody comes up to you and says, well, you know, God's changed now what he's doing. He's no longer operating according to the word of faith. He's no longer operating according to speaking words and having them come to pass. Now it's all just greasy grace. No, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus operated by faith, by speaking words, remember the fig tree, calling those things that be not as though they were, and they came to pass, and then Peter saw it, and he noted it, and he told Jesus, and he said, look there, the fig tree that you cursed has withered away. Woo! And Jesus said, let me tell you about this. If you had faith, <laughs> see, and then he went into his teaching on that you can have what you say, confession brings possession. Jesus Christ the same. He hasn't changed. I'm getting off, I'm shotgun here, boy. I'm getting off on a lot of different things, but it's all good stuff that you need to know. All right. <laughs> There's neither variableness, neither shadow of turning. Don't you love the King James? Variableness or shadow of turning. In other words, God just doesn't change his mind on things. He is right, and he will always be right. <laughs> and he's not going to change his mind because he was right the first time. All right. Okay, verse 18. Of his own will began he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Boy, every one of these things is something we could get off on and teach a week. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep to our topic. All right. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted or implanted word, which is able to save, sozo, save, heal, deliver, make whole spirit, soul, body, financially and socially, and deliver from all temporal evil your souls, which is your suke, not your pneuma, your pneuma is your spirit, your suke is your mind. So we're talking about saving, healing, protecting, redeeming your mind with the engrafted word. And here's what I was finally after, verse 22. We went all the way from 2 to 22 here. 22, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Why? Because if you're just a hearer of the word, notice what it says, deceiving your own selves. You will be self-deceived. Let me tell you something. The greasy grace crowd is self-deceived. Now the devil's got him down, going down a road. 
That's true. And there are doctrines of devils at work. But I'm telling you, if you start thinking along the lines of, well, I don't have to do anything. I just operate by grace, and so I don't need that faith stuff anymore. Guess what? You're self-deceived. You will not receive from the Lord. Remember the principle we talked about earlier? You will not receive from the Lord if you are apart from the Word of God. That was what got us on this little bit of a tangent to start with, is the understanding that you need to do what the Word says. Be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And here's the explanation of this. For if any be a hearer of the Word and not a doer of the Word, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, what was he saying you were to look into? The mirror of the Word, right? The Word of God is the perfect law of liberty. Now I know, again, these greasy grace folks, they don't hear about law. Ah, oh, we're not under the law. You're under the law of liberty. It's a perfect law of liberty. It's not hard. It's not grievous. But it is a law. Did you know that if you pick up a, an apple and throw it in the air, it will fall back to the ground because of the law of gravity? Is there anything wrong with the law of gravity? No. It's just a law. It's a universal constant. Well, let me tell you, there's a universal constant that is called the Word of God that is a law, the perfect law of liberty. Now, the thing about liberty is, liberty is liberating. Wow, what a revelation, Dr. Bill. <laughs> well, it is. Liberty is liberating. See, these people that are in this greasy grace doctrine, this, this hyper grace, whatever you want to call it, they think that if you put law on something, it is so restricting that they don't want to live there. They want to deal with it, don't want to deal with it. They don't, I'm not under the law. I'm not, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to listen because I'm not under the law. Wait a minute. Law is simply something that works the same way every time. Throw the apple in the air, falls to the ground every time. That's the law of gravity. That, gravity. That's what Newton found. You know, they always have a story about the apple falling in his head. He looked at the apple and got to thinking about it and came up with the law of gravity. I don't know if that actually happened or not, but the principle's correct. It's a law. It's a universal constant. Speed of light, 186,000 plus miles per second is a universal constant. That's just talking in the area of science and physics. But in the Word of God, the law of liberty, which is liberating, is the Word of God. So he says, Whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, notice, continueth therein, it's not something you get one time. See, that just makes you a hearer. Oh, I'm just a hearer of the Word. Well, you don't get it with just one time. You continue in it. And continue it therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, or we would say a doer of the word in this case, this man shall be whoo, blessed. Blessed in his deed. Now the, 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 he, uh, the Greek here, I'm sorry, says it this way. He will be blessed in the doing. When you do the word, you'll be blessed in the doing. Do you see that? Well, Dr. Bill, I haven't been blessed in the doing. Have you been consistent? Have you stayed in the Word? Are you confessing the Word? Are you operating in the Word? Are you being consistent with the Word? Well, if you haven't, you're a forgetful hearer, and don't let yourself think you shall receive anything of the Lord. But I'm telling you what, God is the God of increase, and He will increase you and increase you as you stay in the Word, stay with the perfect law of liberty, operate according to the Word of God, you will see tremendous blessing in your life. I'm telling you, I have seen tremendous blessing in my life, personally. 
Because I'm a tither, I'm a giver, and I stay on the Word, and I confess the Word, I see things happen all the time that I've talked to people about and, and told them about and said things, and, and they're like, wow, how can that happen? It can happen because God is the God of increase. God is blessing. God is increasing. God is building all the time. But you've got to be a doer. You got to do what the Word of God says to do, and it's not hard, and it is liberating. Amen. Well, whew, man, we we got into some things. Today. I'm telling you, this is good stuff, folks. You need to study this out. I, I'm excited about hearing what God is saying through the Word of God through these netcasts. Hallelujah. Join us on Word of Faith Radio. We're on wofr.org. I'll put it up here on the screen. You can go there and hear Word of Faith Radio. We're on Monday through Friday. That's Monday through Friday weekly program, 15 minutes a day, 1130 to 1145, right after Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland has a 30-minute program that comes on at 11 o'clock. This is Eastern Time, so whatever time zone you're in, you can make your adjustment. Eastern Time, he comes on at 11. I come on at 11.30. And then Bill Winston comes on at 11.45. Talk about the hour of power, hallelujah. <laughs> you need to tune in at that time. For a lot of you, it's convenient because it's around lunch. And you can just tune in and listen. And you can do that through your internet connection. You can do it through all kinds of devices that are out there now that can play um, uh, the internet feed from Word of Faith Radio. So I encourage you to check that out. Also, the audio of this netcast is available on Sundays at Word of Faith Radio, and that is Sunday mornings, Eastern Time again, at 9.30. Again, right after Kenneth Copeland. He's on at 9 o'clock in the morning. We're on at 9.30 in the morning. I encourage you to check that out. And of course, all the speakers that are on Word of Faith Radio. Listen to their broadcast. I'm telling you, there's great teaching available on Word of Faith Radio. Also, don't forget our SpeakFaith.tv Roku channel. I encourage you to do that. You can go to our website, wofm.org, and there's a little red banner there. You click on that, you can get a Roku device and sign up for the SpeakFaith.tv channel, or you can simply go to SpeakFaith.tv, that website, and in the upper right-hand corner, we have a banner or you know, a little deal there where you can click and get the Roku box. Again, we don't receive anything from the Roku box. We do receive a little bit for a referral because we referred you to their site to purchase a Roku box. But we're not in the business of selling Roku box. That's not our purpose. What we want you to do is we want you to get the Word of God and be in it consistently and hear it consistently and be a faithful doer of the Word that you're hearing. Amen. Well, you can write us here at Word of Faith Ministries, our address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. You can also write me at my email address, Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. That stands for Word of Faith Ministries. And, of course, dot O-R-G because we're a nonprofit organization. Join us next time. Remember, until then, to fulfill... The Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.